Ezekiel chapter 37. Familiar passage in the, in the Bible. Many people have some kind of reference. And the hand of the Lord was upon me. Now, you've just been saying, the word of God has come unto me. The hand of the Lord has been upon me. And he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. Right. This is one of the few times that Ezekiel gets raptured. That the Holy Spirit grabs him and moves him from place to There's one place in Ezekiel that said it grabbed him by his hair. I hope that don't happen with our rapture. So Ezekiel is in one place. Then boom, he's somewhere else. Now, Philip was in one place and the Holy Spirit said, go down to this place in the desert. Now, Philip was not, boom, here I am in the desert. But after the baptism of the eunuch, Philip disappears. That's what's going to happen with the Christian. One day, we're all, we're all going to be gone, even those that are in the grave. I don't know if the graves are going to actually literally open. I think they are. I believe they're... The dirt's going to go flying, the casket's going to be open, and that concrete barrier. You ain't going to keep a dead man down that's in Christ. But Ezekiel, that picture is, he's transported. And, and you see this stuff in the movies. You know, the Star Trek, okay, beat me up, Scotty. And then there they are. And the time machine, he goes from one time period to another time period. It's Satan taking the, the, the stories of the Bible and using for his own glory. And set me down in the midst of a valley which was full of bones. And it caused me to, pa it caused me to pass by them round about. Now, I don't know if he's walking or the Holy Spirit is... There's a lot of weird things in the Bible. You can turn off the TV and open up your Bible. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. So they've been dead for a long time. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Now look at the answer was not no. Ezekiel knows God enough when he has a question like that. Can they live? God, <laughs> I ain't answering that question like that because you are all powerful and I don't know what you're going to do. Because if you're going to ask me a question like that, you're going to do something. I know you by now. So I, I don't know. <laughs> and that's what he's saying. I don't know. And that's a proper response. Again, he said to me, prophesy. Look at it. Prophesy unto these bones. He's been prophesying to mountains. He's been prophesying to trees. He's going out in the middle of a dead man's bones. And he's going to preach to the bones. And they got more sense, those dead bones, than your typical Baptist today. Did I say that? And say unto them, the dead bones. Oh, ye dry bones. Hear the word of the Lord. <laughs> now, I ain't talking about the Catholics. I ain't talking about the Mormons. I ain't talking about Jehovah. I'm talking to you, Christian Baptists. You're supposed to hear the word of the Lord. And there are many Baptists that go to Baptist churches on Sunday. They don't hear the word of the Lord. And if they do hear the word of the Lord, many are not going to listen. And the fact is that these dry bones are going to listen to the word of God is an example to us who are living. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. I will lay sinews upon you, and bring up flesh upon you, cover you with skin, and put breath in you. So he's going to put the, the, the insides Shinnies, those are the muscles and flesh. And he's going to put skin. And after that, he's going to put breath. 
I mean, this is where you get the zombie apocalypse. You shall live. You shall know that I am the Lord. How are you going to know you're the Lord this time? You were dead and now you're alive. At the rapture, every Christian's got, hey, that's the Lord. So I prophesied. As I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise. Behold, a shaking. And the bones came together. Now he said, it's interesting that verse 4, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. There are dead bones of humans, men. How many with a set of two? How many bones of the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup? Now those are the three bones of the middle ears, and every man, most men will have two. It's a valley of dry, full bones. And how many of the inner air are those three bones all over the place to hear the word of God? And that the fact is, God is true. And the bones to his bones. And when I beheld low sinews, and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then he said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, O son of man. Say to the wind. Now he's preaching to the wind. Notice how the word prophecy. I mean, we look at prophecy, something to tell the future. Thus saith the Lord God, come four winds, O breath, and breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, exceedingly great army. Now, if we go to Genesis chapter 2, something like, Something not like in Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground. There was no bone. Dirt. And breathed into his nostrils the bread of life. And man became a living soul. So we see here by the scriptures. Once dead doesn't keep you dead. That there is life after death. And I know one man dealt with, and I heard a few times, well, when we're dead, that's it. Not according to the scriptures. The Jehovah Witness say, well, hell is the grave. No, 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 no. Outside the rapture, I'm going to die one day. And you put me dead, however buried, whatever happens to me, I'm coming up, I'm coming alive again. Paul, Peter, James, John, Mary, Matthew, Mark, Luke are coming back alive. David, King David, coming back alive. King Saul. Cain, the pharaohs are all coming back to life. And you're going to go to life, to glory with Jesus Christ. Or you're going to go into the lake of fire that burns forever. But you're coming out of that grave. Even for the lost man, Revelation 20 says, death and hell gave up. And you're going to stand before Jesus Christ and all of all to be alls. And you're going to be living. So as God breathed into Adam, there's some kind of with the wind here. And even the new birth, Jesus makes a reference to the wind. Here's that new birth in John 3. 
Nicodemus. These are dead bones. Need to be born again. Need to come back to life. Where the wind blisters. If I prophesy in the wind, prophesy, Son of Man, say unto the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come thou four winds, O breath, and breathe upon the slain. They were alive, they were slain, that they may live. So I prophesy as he commanded me, the breath came in them, and they lived and stood upon their feet. An exceedingly great army. You know, if you ever, I was into Roman and Greek, Greek mythology. So I've seen the movie Jason and Argonauts. And those bones that come to life, the mighty army, they didn't have no shit news. They didn't have no skin. You know, they were just skeletons. Satan didn't have them go all the way of Ezekiel 37. See, a lot of this mythology, a lot of this occult, a lot of this gods and goddesses worship, Satan had taken out of the Bible. These are men. They're alive. You say, did it really happen? I believe it happened. I believe it's also prophecy. And he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dry. Our hope is lost. We are cut off from our part. You know, we're dead. We have no light. Therefore, prophet prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, my people, O people, Israel, I will open your graves. Okay. Matthew 27. Matthew 27, 52. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Now, all right, you say, well, there's Ezekiel. Problem. There's a problem. Verse 12. I will open your graves. Matthew 27. And cause you to come up out of your graves, Matthew 27. And bring you into the land of Israel, Matthew 27. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you out of their graves. And, ye, and shall put my spirit in you, not Matthew 27. Then you shall know I am the Lord has spoken and perform it, save the Lord. Now what we're going to do is we're going to stop there, but we're going to get into seeing the millennium. The nation of Israel is going to be reborn, resurrected from the death, put into their put into their land, given a new heart, a new spirit. They're going to love and serve the Lord and will be King David and Solomon and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. This is not the resurrection in Matthew. Though it can also speak of the resurrection. Because not every, although some Old Testament saints stayed in the ground, some came up and don't know who and don't know what. But Ezekiel 37 looks to the future of Israel, who people say God's all finished with the Jew. He's going to come out of that grave. Because most of the Jews in the tribulation period, going to the second advent, the end of Daniel's seventh week, most of the Jews are going to be dead, beheaded. And I saw the souls that were beheaded for, for the word of God. Now, kind of funny, if, if their heads have been beheaded on the earth and their bodies have been thrown to some kind of burial, de you know, sometimes in a, you know, you read Fox's Book of Martyrs, and yet without their heads, they are in heaven speaking. You can't speak without your mouth. 
So those who have been beheaded for the word of God, they're not dead. They're in heaven. And they're crying out for vengeance. The rich man died and was buried in hell. He lifted up his eyes. He didn't die. You don't die. Your body dies, but you don't. You go on to the afterlife. We'll stop right there.